So this is the AMD Ryzen 7 1800X. And this is the cooler that it comes with. Okay, so it doesn't come with a cooler. Okay, well, the Wraith Max is a thing if you're getting your system from an SI or what have you. But I proposed the question, what if it had come with the AMD Wraith cooler that was shipped with last generation FX series parts? It's quite a robust cooler. It's definitely no slouch, and it was great on the FX. And the FX chips were a much higher TDP. 125 watts versus the 95 that you get on the 1800X. So I proposed the question, how would the 1800X perform if it had been shipped with the AMD Wraith cooler? So what we did was we took our typical setup that we have here, which is an 1800X, an MSI X370 X Power Gaming Titanium Mouthful Motherboard, uh, 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 running at 2667, and a GTX 1080 to run through various uh, performance tests. We wanted to see how, uh, what temperatures were like when we were rendering versus temperatures while we were gaming and then temperatures under a straight up stress test. We did it at stock settings, which was of course the 3.6 gigahertz base with a 4.1 theoretical XFR boost, which hardly ever happens with this motherboard. The other test that we did was overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz at an astonishing low 1.264 volts. Something very important to keep in mind here, the chip that we have overclocks to about 4.025 uh, at relatively low voltages. So this 1.264 may not be typical of many other chips. This is just what we found. So stock versus overclock temperatures while we were rendering, uh, stock temperatures saw it at coming around 55C. Now this is accounting for the 20, the plus 20% offset that the X variants of the 1700 and 1800 are experiencing right now. That's just how they were made. Now the stock speed, uh, stock temperatures were 55C rendering while overclocked we saw 53C. It was actually lower because the voltages were lower with the overclock setting. Now gaming, however, we saw the temperature a little bit higher, whereas stock we saw 49 to 52 C. And then while gaming, it sat between 51 and 54. The reason I did these is because the temperature would fluctuate a little bit while playing. So I wanted to kind of give a range that it stayed within. Now for the stress test, we did run the 3D Mark uh, Time Spy CPU test. And Keith, why didn't you run an extended long-term test? Well, to be quite honest, this cooler over long period 100% loads, it can start to get a bit overwhelming and I didn't have those available at the time on this system. So we just wanted to see kind of a full load, short term burst, see where we ended up. Under the stock settings, we got 62C and stress test, we got 60C, a 2C reduction, same as we saw with rendering when used the overclock settings with the lower voltages. So. What if AMD had included this cooler with the 1800X? I think most people would have been fine because it, one, it doesn't overclock very far. And at stock settings, it's pretty quick. And those temperatures are quite nice under a stock cooler. It kind of makes me wish they had bundled it in, but there are reports that maybe AMD will be throwing in the Wraith Max cooler under the, um, <clears throat> the 1700 and 1800X models going forward, but we've yet to see any official word on that, so that's all speculation. What about noise? Um, well, the problem that we run into here is that because of the plus 20C offset, the fan curves are quite aggressive with these, so it can get a tad bit noisy, but under gaming conditions, it stays pretty consistent, and well, here's a sound bite to see how that sounds while gaming. So at the end of the day, I'm kind of bummed out it didn't come with the Wraith Cooler. The Wraith Cooler does a pretty good job keeping this thing in check. Uh, so, you know, hey AMD, uh, can we get a cooler? <laughs> uh, truth is, when the CPU launched, there was a lot of problems getting aftermarket cooler brackets. If you were running Noctua and you were able to hit them up beforehand, you were able to get a bracket with no problem. If you were running something like the H100i, the older uh, Corsair ones where it uses the crossbar, you were, you were perfectly fine with that. However, there was a lot of people left out in the heat 
I guess you could say, when they ordered the CPU cooler uh, or the CPU and a motherboard and found they were not really compatible and they may not have had a cooler on hand. However, if you were upgrading from something like an 8350 and you had one of these Wraith coolers on hand, you were in great shape. Well, this has been it. This was just a thought experiment. Have a little fun with these things. Um, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. If you found this video entertaining or informative, feel free to leave us a like and a subscribe and leave us a comment down below and we will catch you on the next video.